and good evening, and welcome to City Focus. I'm Marty Olson, your host, and I'd like to welcome back uh, my friend and yours, <laughs> a real a new London guy, George Potts. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Marty. And uh, George is a uh, long time, actually continues to be uh, in law enforcement at the New London Police Department. Mm -hmm. And from there uh, over to Mash and Tuckett, uh, where you finished as chief, I believe. Yeah, acting chief, yep, yep. And then, and, uh, and then on to Grant Long Point, where I am currently, part time. And you also do uh, head of security at Mitchell College here in town. Yes, yes. Yep. So you, you, keep, uh, you keep on going. Yeah, well, I'm too young to retire yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing something you enjoy that's and it. that you're good at. Yes, oh, thank you. So yeah. that's that's uh, that's important. Yep. And, uh, George is a gentleman who's been given back to the community f forever, and uh, it's greatly appreciated. Yeah, and it's guys like you that help make a, a community, and in our case, in New London, yep, a better place oh, to be. Great. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Thank you. But uh, tonight we've got uh, George in to, to talk about a topic that I had you in. I, I don't know a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, where you are doing a metal detecting. And at that time, um, I think you were just kind of getting started with what you're doing now. You've initiated mm -hmm. a club and you've got a lot yeah. of folks that are participating and uh, you're expanding what you're doing. And I thought it would be kind of nice to get a, an update on what's going on. A absolutely. So, yeah, a couple of years ago when I was on, I had, um, I was getting more into metal detecting um and i was actually teaching for new london adult ed i was teaching classes I, I i was surprised at how many people when they saw me metal detecting came up and they were like oh i have one but i don't even know how to turn it on i don't know I, you know whenever i metal detect i only find bottle caps so i got together um with a uh, family friend Peg, uh, peggy cherick who kind of runs the programs at New London Adult Ed. We talked, she says, oh, I think it would be great to do. So I started that. Uh, I did that for a couple of years. Um, while I was doing that, I was in a club, uh, a metal detecting club, but they met up in Brooklyn, Connecticut. That's a bit of a hole. Yes, so it was nice to go there during the summer, uh, but when the winter came, it was, it was not, you know, sometimes worth the drive in the snow. So that club was kind of after five years, it was slowing down. So I said, you know what, let me start a club down here in southeastern Connecticut. Well, I drive when I can just start one. So I started a club, um, Southern New England Relic Hunters. Uh, as me, my wife, my kids all got together. We came up with the name. We came up with the logo. Um, we started the club. We meet every third Tuesday at Goshen Fire Department in Waterford. Um, okay. So we meet there, and uh, it started off with, you know, 25, 30 people. And I, in November, it'll be two years that we've been in existence, and we're up to just about 70 members. That's, a, that's and, amazing. Yeah. What, now, what, what piqued your interest to, to even get into, involved with this? So I think what it is for me is I enjoy, um, I enjoy not knowing like that surprise, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what really drew me into metal detecting. I wasn't that much of a history buff. I do, I did kind of like history, um, but I just liked the f surprise of not knowing what you were gonna find next, you know? And then what happened was it's, you know, once I got into metal detecting, then all of a sudden, you know, and I, I wish I had this passion in high school, but I loved history. I started reading all kinds of history books, all kinds of things about the American Revolution, the Civil War. I uh, started doing research on the stuff I was finding. I uh, started studying coins. I, you know, back in the day, I probably couldn't even told you what a half dollar looked like. But now I can tell you, you know, certain years, certain countries. I mean, I have, you know, expanded my collection. So really, that's, I think it was the first, at first, the surprise but now it's more of the historical. I love finding something that could get lost forever uh, and something that you don't think you're gonna find. You know, that's really neat. So what, uh, what type of sites lend themselves to uh, more success than others? Yeah, so uh, 
I like to concentrate on older uh, houses or older properties. Um, you know, I, I reach out to people I know. I mean, I've gone by strangers' houses. I don't like to go up to their doors and knock, but if I see them outside, I go up and just start talking to them, explain to them what I do. Um, you know, we have, uh, it being in the club, we're very respectful of people's properties. You know, we don't dig holes and leave them open. We know how to do it, not to ruin the lawn. And I explained that, you know, hey, listen, everything I find, you're more than welcome to keep. You know, if you don't want to keep it, then obviously I'll take it. But, you know, I think people are just as interested um, in finding out what's on their property as I am. So I kind of concentrate on old houses, but. Yeah. In, in that regard, then, do you have a written contract with, uh, with a, a homeowner or a property owner? Well, yeah, so... Uh, uh, you know, laying out the... Uh, I mean, let's say you find something that's exceptionally valuable. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's mine. No, it's mine. I found yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean, obviously, because property. it's on their property, it would go to them. And I know that's easier said than done. But we always joke whenever I talk to a homeowner. I say, well, listen, if I find the gold bar... You know, I'll give it to you. But the chances, I, I tell everybody, the chances of you being rich from this hobby, <laughs> you probably have a better chance of winning the Connecticut lottery, uh, to be honest with you. Um, you know, I don't, I don't do this for monetary gain. Everything I found, I have. Um, I literally have a room now dedicated to all my finds. So I don't, you know, people always say, oh, what's that worth? What's that worth? What's that worth? That's the last thing I find out. Um, I just like the surprise. And if somebody wants to keep stuff, which people have done it before, that, that's fine. I just ask them, just let me take a picture of it so I can at least show it on my Facebook. We have a Facebook, you know, Southern New England Relic Hunters on Facebook. And uh, I do that. And there's also another Facebook page, uh, New London History and more. And I post pictures uh, when I find stuff in New London on that page as well. And people, I, I was surprised at how many people noticed when I stopped posting because I didn't want to because it, it's really about New London history. I don't want to make it all about my metal detecting page of stuff I found in New London. And I started slowing up and people were like, oh, you know, how come you haven't been posting? And people I don't even know that just knew me from face, obviously from the uh, Facebook page and uh, would come up and say, you know, please, I enjoy seeing the stuff. I, I really, and I was like, okay. So now and then I'll post on that website as well. But or that Facebook page, but it surprises me how many people are fascinated by it, yeah. you know. Have you have you found anything that, uh, let's call it uh, of, of museum quality? Well, uh, I mean, you know. Whether it's the Lyman uh, Allen or something yeah. maybe a little larger, <laughs> uh, of, you know, Hartford, Boston, yeah, or New well, York. Yeah, well, I can tell you that it's, it's definitely, I'm sure there's stuff out here, especially in New London in New London County. Uh, I don't think people realize the history, but I haven't found anything museum quality. I did find a, uh, I did find an, a really nice arrowhead um, that I had reached out um, to see if somebody wanted it for their museum, but the homeowner claimed it. It was on their property, which is fine. Uh, he took it, what he did with it, I, I, I don't know, but I mean, you know, I've always said uh, if, you know, and I've I've lent out my stuff, and I just say, hey, listen, just um, give me credit for finding it. I don't care if you just say, you know, this was found by George Potts down in the corner. You know, I'm not in it for uh, monetary. I have done some historical places around the area, um, and they have taken my stuff that I found and put it in their uh, houses for display. They're not museum quality, but, you know, they still enjoy it. They still enjoy it. You know, they can say this was found on this property, you know, old 1700s, 1800s houses. So uh, do you spend most of your time in New London, or have you expanded your geographic uh, uh, reach a little bit into New London County or beyond? Yeah, so I've kind of expanded beyond. I would love to just stay in New London. Um, but as you know, New London, there aren't as many properties or the properties that are there aren't as massive as some of the other ones, uh, you know. Uh, another good spot to go are, are uh, old farms. And the reason why old farms is because they're constantly tilling up the land, so they're constantly bringing stuff up. 
Uh, so that's actually big. So I've been out to old farms, you know, out, you know, Brooklyn, Sprague, you know, uh, the country section of the state. Um, been out to Tiffany's out but in Lyme, uh, or Yeah, no, I, I have not. I have not. But it, it's funny you say that because the Tiffany's, that's Mitchell College, as you know, that was all part of the Tiffany's property. And that's where Mitchell College got that was from the Tiffany's. Um, but, yeah, no, I um, I haven't gone to the old Lyme, old Saybrook area yet. Uh, it's been mostly New London. Like I said, if I could just stay in New London. Um, but, you know, it's been word of mouth when I do people's properties. So sometimes it slows up and I don't have anywhere to go. So I, I really have to do some kind of research, you know, and see where I can go. I would think construction sites might be a uh, area where you, as you mentioned to me, where you, the ground is being turned over and... Uh, absolutely, absolutely. There's been a, a couple of times where, uh, is it Kelowna Concrete, do, uh, redoing some of the sidewalks in New London. Yep. And if they leave them open before they uh, uh, pave them, I'll go over there and try to hit some. But there's, you know, there's there's some coins and, you know, had I not found them, they would have been paved over and buried for, you know, who knows, another 30, 40 years until they redo the sidewalks again. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so, yeah, so uh, construction sites are good. I, you know, anything, and I always... I, you know, and I always just talk about this in my classes, but I try not to uh, focus just on old properties because one of the one of the older coins I found, it was an 1878, matter of fact, I, or uh, I'm sorry, 1787. I found it, and I think I had it on your last property. I found it in my parents' house <laughs> after they built the house in 1995, and I was just playing around with the metal detector, not expecting to find anything. You know, I was just testing it, and I found a 1787 Connecticut copper, um, you know. So come to find out, obviously, that was all land. That was farm land uh, for years. So, you know, so I always tell everybody, just because the property is not, or the house isn't old, doesn't mean the property is not yeah. old. Have you spent any time down at uh, Fort Trumbull? No. So Fort Trumbull is uh, Fort Trumbull is actually one of the ones listed in. Uh, so Connecticut has a law, and and this is one of the th things that I bring up with my um, when when I was teaching. Connecticut does have laws on metal detecting in state parks and state property, and they actually have certain properties that are mentioned, and Fort Trumbull is strictly one of them. Listen, I would. <laughs> I tell my wife, because every night when we go for a ride around New London and I go by Fort Trumbull, you know, it's the first thing I said, oh, my God, I would love to do that. What can only be in there, you know, because, I mean, that, you know, you're talking. So, you know, you talk about Fort Trumbull and, um, you know, there's, there's so much history, especially with the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812 in New London, because there was that article that was in the paper just not too long ago about Fort Nonsense. Yep. That was up near Ocean and Willits. Um, you know, and uh, so, yeah, so, and that's up really where I live. Um, and I've, you know, being up in that area and stuff like that, I have found some uh, War of 1812 items, some stuff from that, that, you know, I, so who knows? Who knows where everybody lives? You don't know what was there before there, uh, before you were there, before your house was there. And, and land was land. You know, we always... Well, I know that, uh, I mean, for instance, in the south end of the city, when my father was growing up, and he was born in one back in 1918, mm -hmm. the south end of the city was primarily farmland. Yes, yes. You wouldn't know it now, but... Yeah, uh, you know. You know and, it was a trolley uh, to the beach and, uh, and farms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, a, and you know, and on the beach were houses, you know, prior to the 1938 hurricane. Um, so, yeah, so there's, like I said, I don't... I didn't appreciate, now I've lived in London my whole life. You know, probably within a few blocks of where I live now. And I never knew or appreciated the history of the city until I got to do this. And I kind of wish, you know, I don't want to put schools and educators, I kind of wish there is a little class, um, especially in New London, where they can say, hey, listen, I, you know, it's only a one hour a day class for the last four weeks. But we're gonna talk about New London history because I don't think people realize how significant New London was, you know, throughout the wars and throughout everything. 
Uh, well, yeah. I, I remember, and I'm a little older than you are, yeah. but when I was growing up and going to Harbor School, I believe it was in fourth grade, it, there was a, a segment uh, on, on New London. Where yeah. we, were, uh, were taught and, and, and our teachers knew it and Louise, uh, Louise Showalter would also would come in and she was you know a noted uh, local historian mm -hmm. and uh, you know, she saved the custom house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, so I, I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it's unfortunate and, and you know, and I know there's other stuff to learn, uh, but I just hate to see that history of New London get lost. Well, I agree with you. I mean, and that's why I do this. And, uh, you know, um, on my business card uh, that I have, it says, save in history one yard at a time. Because that's what I'm really looking to do. You know, people ask me about the beaches and finding jewelry and stuff like that. Sure, I could do that, and I could find two, $3,000 rings, but that that doesn't interest me as yeah. much. Have you, you know? any, have you had any interaction with uh, Jim Streeter over in Groton? He's kind of the you know, unofficial historian over there. And, uh, no, I mean, and they've got a level of history as well. Oh, God, yeah. the river. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, so actually, um, one of the properties that I did um, was the Avery Cop House right yes. on Thames, and we found a bunch of stuff for them, um, for their museum there. I haven't been back to see if they have it on display, uh, but it was funny. They, they were... They were excited about everything we found. I mean, we found some old skeleton keys that belonged to the original house. Uh, we found a, a, an old key to the Paul Revere Hotel in Boston, uh, a bunch of old coins from the 1800s, but I found a dog license with a dog's name on it, and they absolutely loved it. Uh, that was the one thing they, you know, I'm like, wow, yeah, but look at all these coins. Like, oh, no, you don't understand? Because I guess the family... That was one of their focal points for the family was their pet, their pet dog. And they had known about the dog and everything, and this was the dog's license tag with its name on it. And they, you know, they, lo and they had it all. We, we gave it all to them because, again, it's just, just saving history, you know, and, and giving them something that nobody would have, you know, would just walk over it. Nobody knows what's underneath you. Yeah. So, is, yeah. Uh, is Fort Griswold... Uh that's uh, off limits. Yeah, that's, that's off limits. Yeah, huh? yep, yep. So, and I try to, uh, you know, there are people that'll push the boundaries in the metal detecting world, but just because of my background, I always make sure I am strictly by, you know, being a, still being a police officer, but being retired, especially into London, you know, I always respect the laws and 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 you know and if it says no you can't then absolutely because you know what if you don't find it here there's other places that i can go so i don't ever you know try to you know there's the state parks that kind of stuff i don't dig in them yep. you know now you mentioned that you uh had an opportunity to, to do some teaching at new london adult ed <clears throat> now, how long have you, are you doing that now? No, so I kind of had to finally stop. I just had too much on my plate. Um, and um, so, unfortunately, the teaching part lost. Uh, you know, I still had the hobby of metal detecting. I still worked the part-time ground long point and the full-time at Mitchell. So doing the teaching, too, was just too much. I might take it back up in another year or two, maybe. But for the time being, I just said, you know what, let's just hold off. But, I mean, I was having, and when I was having the class, it was just after the COVID. Uh, so they had to limit the class to 12 because of spacing. And they were selling out the classes left and right. I mean, we, were, had, we had to keep adding classes because. And were know. they mostly uh, local yokels or were they... Uh Folks that are new in the community. Uh, yeah, I mean we've got a you know a, a significant immigrant population. Were you getting folks that were coming in from out of the you know other countries? Yeah. So this looks a way to really dive in here. Into yeah, my new community. I would say we you know as for um, other ethnicities and, and um, there was a hodgepodge of everything. Retired, young. Uh, I mean I had. Uh, parents come with their 12-year-old, 13-year-old sons and daughters.
because one of the things that, and, and uh, again, we're just after COVID, is people were getting into metal detecting because that was one of the few hobbies you could go out by yourself or go out with your son and daughter, you know, and have some family time because stuff was so limited. But we, you know, it was, um, it was great to do. It really brought in a lot of people. And unfortunately at the time, uh, I always joked about it, was the peak of Oak Island. And everybody thought they were going to find, you know, and I try to tell everybody, listen, if you're going to, if you're not finding 15 to 20 bottle caps for every decent coin, then you're not doing something right. <laughs> you know, when you watch these shows, you're only watching the good stuff. Yeah, they, Nobody they, wants to see them dig a bottle cap. Nobody wants to see you dig a pull tab. Nobody wants to see you dig a nail. Uh, you know, that's one thing that I always joke around with my friends because uh, we always take pictures of the stuff at the end. I said, we should be getting an award from the EPA for the amount of garbage that we take out of <laughs> the land because, I mean, I'm talking pounds and pounds worth. Uh, so people don't see that, and that's what I tell them. Don't get discouraged because that's what a lot of people would say. Oh, wow, I just found bottle caps, so I just put it in my closet because I'm done. Well, that's unfortunately that's what you're going to find because bottle caps are metal, and they're similar to what a nickel comes up as, so, you know. And I always used to tell everybody in my class, when you first start out, dig everything. Dig everything. Because you're new. You don't know. You know, there's probably some stuff that I miss, but I kind of have an ear for things now, you know. And, and um, I can, you know, whenever we watch these shows, and my wife's watching them with me, which she doesn't like to watch too often, because she's like, how do you sit here and watch metal detecting shows? And I'm like... But I'll guess what they dig in before they even dig it, just by what comes up on their screen and what it sounds like. And 90% of the time, I'm correct what it is. So it's just something that I've learned over time, you know. But yeah, it's it's a great hobby. Now you mentioned also that you have taught at Mitchell. Now, um, is this a for credit class or is it? A, a class that's an audit where they don't get credit is more for for fun and is it for Mitchell students or is it for the community? Yeah, so I haven't started teaching at Mitchell yet for that, but they, there's been talks about maybe starting a club um, there and then maybe looking at it sometime in the future for like a credit type of class. But I haven't started there yet only because, <coughs> you know, <coughs> metal detecting is nice but you have to have enough of a curriculum to be able to get those three college credits and i don't know if there's enough you know maybe starting out as a club um because uh, i tell everybody uh, you know you give me a good hour hour and a half just with you and i can get you pretty much where you think you should be starting but the problem is now you got to buy the equipment and if you buy the equipment for everything, you're probably talking at least six, seven hundred dollars, you know, for everything. Yeah. And, I, mean, you know. I mean, one of the things I was thinking of is that in regards to uh, teaching is whether it be, uh, especially if it was for credit, uh, how much would be classroom or are these like perpetual field trips? Oh, yeah. So it really would be like a hybrid type. Uh, that's what I did when I was doing it for adult ed, but I only had one day for adult ed. So I'd make it into two days because people enjoyed classrooms, but they want to go out and do it. And it's just like anything else. What you learn in the classroom and what you do out in the field are two totally different things. So I think it would probably be maybe in the beginning classroom, but after that, and I, I tell everybody, it's just going out and being repetitive and learning those noises and learning the, you know, you had mentioned earlier, we were talking about some of the libraries, uh, you can take out metal detectors and, you know, people are like, oh, I can go get one. Well, it's not as easy just to turn it on and go because if it was, then everybody would be doing it, you know, just not a beep for everything. Um, so, yeah, so really it would be probably the, probably more of the field work and going out and doing stuff and finding out uh, what that tone means. What does this mean? You know, what does that mean? Certain numbers. Uh, there's, there's actually quite a bit to it. There really is, you know, because like I said, if it was easy, then everybody would be buying one and going out and finding everything. Um, now, you know. now, when you were on last time, you mentioned that uh, 
at, at the time it was Chief Tom Curcio, now a retired Chief Tom Curcio, was uh, going out with you from time to time. Yes. Is he still uh, hanging in there? Yes, he's still in there. Matter of fact, uh, the other night, just literally, I think at like 7 o'clock, um, I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to go run down to Ocean Beach and go do some metal detecting. I was just looking for somewhere quick, and I called Tom and said, hey, we only got about an hour and 15 minutes of light. You want to come down? And he's like, absolutely. And he came down. But we try to get together as often as we can. You know, he's got new grandbabies. So his priorities are a little different than mine, which I understand. Um, but, you know, um, yeah, no, he's, and, uh, you know, I enjoy going with Tom because we, we actually laugh and have a good time. And uh, Tom's found some pretty good stuff as well. And, you know, with Tom, um, came uh, Roger Tompkins, who had retired from the fire department. Right. And uh, now Chief Scow, Vern, uh, he had been a member, uh, but he just didn't have time. Um, but he had been a member as well. So we had like three or four of the retired New London firefighters or current firefighters that had uh, joined as well. So, yeah, so it's a good group. And we try to, you know, metal detecting is fun, but it's even fun. I know, more fun when you go out with other people, you know, and you see others finds or, you, you know, you're out there just joking. It's very good camaraderie. Uh, you know, like I said, we have uh, group hunts every now and then. Uh, you know, we have 30, 40 people show up and we just go out to now, somewhere. Now to, 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 to become a member of the organization. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, are there dues or people just, just show up and kind of float in and out, and out as they... Yeah, are in the mood. So here's what I tell everybody because I, I think some people are apprehensive because a they don't have a detector yet or b they're brand new and everything. I says, listen, it's a great group of people, and I'm not just saying that because it's my club. They really, we really are. We're a great group of people. I've never seen a group more supportive of new members giving them equipment if they need it, if they have extras, so forth and so on. But I tell them, the first meeting, come for free. Come and see what it's like. Come and sit there. You know, you hear me talk again, but we talk about events we have coming up. We talk about, we have each month, we have a find uh, of the month category, best silver coin, best, uh, you know, pre-1800s coin, best pre-1900s coin, so forth and so on. The winners of those, I give a silver dime to. Uh, which a lot of people are like, well, it's a silver dime. Yeah, but silver, silver dime is probably worth about $3 nowadays. Um, so they get that, and then at the end, we give, out of all the stuff that we bring in for the month, we give a find of the month, and you get a little wood engraved plaque uh, that we give. So we have pizza. We have, uh, you know, somebody usually brings in a couple of uh, cakes or brownies, soda. So the dues for the year is $40. And that includes all the prizes. We have raffle prizes that I buy with this. Um, I wish I could tell you that the club makes money off of this, but no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as you know, pizza's going through the roof. But we, you know, I buy two sheet pizzas. Uh, we have door prizes. And um, usually I have at least 10 door prizes. Uh, and then with the raffles, I usually have at least probably 10 to 15 decent raffle prizes, including pinpointers and whatever have you. So it's a good time. Um, and like I said, if anybody's interested, come down the, the first and, time, and, and see how, what it's and like. how do they reach you? So I, I, you know, I tell everybody probably the best way to reach me is, you know, they can call me on my cell phone, which I give out. I don't care. It's 860-389-5557. Uh, or if they're interested and they don't want to call because they don't want to give up their number, they can go right on Facebook. Southern New England Relic Hunters. Uh, they can go right on there. They can request to join, uh, or they can find me through Facebook, George Potts. There's two George Pottses. One is my father, uh, and one is me, but you'll see mine has a badge for the logo. Uh, so that is me. You can reach out to me and just say, hey, George. They can message you. Yep, yep, absolutely, or call me, or, you know, if you're going through quite a few of the locals, walk through Mitchell College all the time. If you see me out there, stop and talk to me. I love to talk about it. Matter of fact, I probably talk too much about it, but, you know, um, and, 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 you know, like I said, I'm surprised at how many people actually want to do it but just don't know how to go about doing it. 
Okay, let's get you into the meeting first. See what, see what you can find. When you start seeing what we're finding in the history, that's what really gets people. Um, and then they start detecting. And then I always joke and say that once you start detecting, once you find your first silver coin, you're officially hooked. You know, you're done. Uh, you're going you're gonna to be detecting. Now, now are, are coins the uh, primary thing that you're finding? Or are you finding jewelry? Or are you finding, uh, you mentioned uh, you know, you know, maybe uh, Indian uh, artifacts? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, too, whether or not you've had any contact with the Mashantuckets or the Mohegans uh, to work on any, anything yeah. for them. So as for the Mashantuckets, Tuckets, the Mohegans, I have not reached out to them. Um, I know that they, they value their land and they're, they're, very, um, they're very sacred about it. So I haven't reached out to them, maybe someday, um, but I have not. But I would say primarily we find coins, um, and that's not what we're looking for, but that's usually what we find. Um, I don't know how people lose these coins and some of the ones that we find, I mean, I found silver dollars, you know, and I'm like, how do you not know you dropped a silver dollar and it got buried in the ground, you know, but uh, coins are usually what we find. We do find a lot of what we call uh, relics, which is uh, in the name relic hunters. Um, we do find a lot of, you know, stuff from civil war periods or the late 1800s. Some jewelry, I found a lot of old um, Victorian era um, jewelry, rings, uh, sash buckles when they used to wear the big sashes, uh, you know, hem weights. They're weights that they used to put in the hems of their dresses so they wouldn't blow up. Um, you know, we, we find a lot of that. Um, and again, you just never know. I mean, I, 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 the, the stuff we find is just, and that's what's neat, is you find something, and then when you're with two or three people and you're all trying to figure out what it is, and thank God for the Internet, because now we all have our phones, we're taking pictures of them, we're trying to do research, and find out, hey, you just found a, you know, a Victorian hat pin, or, you know, a, a, you know, a late 1700s, um, you know, something from the Revolutionary War, musket balls, right? I find musket balls um, quite a bit, and depending upon the size, I have calipers now, so I can take the size of it, sure. and tell you whether it's revolutionary, War of 1812, pre-Civil War, uh, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, you really start to learn a lot, but uh, the coins are usually what we find. So that's why I think I know coins now, because I had to find out what I was finding, you know. Uh, now, now you brought a display here. Now what did you what, what did you bring in? So I to, to, I brought to see? Um, some stuff. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's you know this is probably less than five percent of what I have, um, but I try to keep some of the stuff separated. These are what I consider the nicer uh, coins, the nicer meaning they have history. Um, you know, like uh, um, one of the coins we found, it's a two-cent coin from 1864. I had no idea that the United States made two-cent coins. And I'll bet you if you get a bunch of people in a room and ask them if there's such a thing as a two-cent coin, I'll bet you 90% of them will get it wrong because nobody had ever heard of a two-cent coin. 1864, they made two-cent coins. And, and, and who's on that? Uh, uh, so there's just a shield on it. And what the, what the two-cent coin was made for was postage at the time was two cents. Okay. So nowadays they'd have to have a, what, 78 cent coin. <laughs> so, but I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, a two cent coin and I can always, you know, uh, one of my other better finds and I tell everybody, but you'll see the shield on that side and then on the back it actually says uh, two cent. So, um, you know, it's, those are coins that I had no idea, you know, the, I found a uh, 1778, um, what's called a Spanish real. Um, so, you know, this is a Spanish coin that was brought here. Oh, that's, um, that's pretty clear there. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, and that's because that's silver. You know, I tell everybody, you know, I would love to, here, yeah, let me show you what's a typical copper coin, and everybody's gonna be like, well, what's that? That thing just looks like nothing, but, 
I have strong lights. I have uh, microscopes that, you know, I can look under and I can see certain images depending upon which way you hold the light. You can see, but a copper coin and people say, well, that, you know, there's no detail. In it. Well, it's copper and it's been in the, it's been in the ground for close to 300 years possibly. So, you know, that's what a copper coin looks like. So when people say, oh, well, what's that worth? Probably not much. But to me, you know, this is a, a, I think this one right here is a King George II, which is uh, 1737. So you're figuring this is 40 years before we became a country. This uh, English coin, British coin, was in New London, you know. Um, so now, now, did you, British set, soldier set, you set it. all these and you've got them? Uh, yeah, so I got them in an old, <laughs> you can see the old, uh, um, uh, screwing thing but yeah so they're in different things they, there's the plastic holders there's the uh, cheaper versions that are called flips um, most people have those um, yeah and that's uh, another good one that's a uh, that's what's called a barber half dollar uh, that's 1912 so and again you can see the difference when silver comes out a lot of people think that I clean the coins um, silver will come out beautiful uh, you know, you find a silver coin, you just add water and dawn, really, and you spray it down and you rub it with your fingers, and it'll come out looking just like that. Have Copper you, coin. You, have you had this collection appraised? Uh, no, no, I have not. Uh, only because, you know, it sounds, but I don't ever plan on selling it. I don't ever, you know, I, <laughs> I think about it. Well, what am I going to do when I die? My kids are going to be like, Dad, I don't, you know, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? But I don't know. I just enjoy finding it, and that's why I don't give away. I do find some Boy Scout stuff from time to time. I found some old sterling silver uh, Boy Scout rings, Girl Scout rings. There's a lot of people that are into Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. And they reach out to me, and they're like, hey, listen, I collect. I would love to have it. I would love to give it to them, but I don't want to. It's just, you know what? I found it. It's going to stay in my collection, so this way... Someday, what, if, what about wedding rings or engagement rings? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, no, there's. I have actually really two. I'll try to make them quick stories about rings that are just phenomenal. Uh, one was a house that was right up the street from me. Uh, a gentleman had an older house. I just went up, introduced myself to him one day out doing yard work. Said, absolutely, you know, uh, have at it. So I went up there and within, actually I was with Tom Curcio, and within 10 minutes I found a gold wedding band. So I walked up to him, I said, hey, and I don't remember the initials, but I'll say, hey, do you know who A, B, and C, D are? And he goes, that's my brother and his wife. Why? I said, well, I just found somebody's ring. And his eyes lit up. He goes, are you kidding me? He said, my brother lost this five years ago. And he thought he lost it skiing. He said, we spent the whole day digging in the snow looking for this wedding ring. So I said, well, here you go. I gave it to him. He called up his brother right on the phone right then and there, put it on speaker. His brother was screaming so loud that it, the speaker wasn't coming out correctly. Cause, but, you know, and we gave it back to him. Uh, another story was recently we found uh, we were up in North Stonington at the North Stonington Fairgrounds. And uh, we did a group hunt, like 30 of us. Uh, one of the uh, members there, who's from Rhode Island, we have members from Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. One of the members from Rhode Island found a class ring from 1974 Wheeler High School. That's my uh, story. Bro. With, uh, yeah, so with the person's name inside of it. So I called Wheeler High School the next day. They were extremely helpful. I told them who I was. I think she was, I think she liked being a part of it. You know, it was, it was something neat, um, whoever I spoke to. Uh, she gave me his, his name because I wasn't sure what the last name was because it was written in script, so it looked a little, but it ended up being a common name. Um, I gave it to my youngest daughter and said, basically, here, run with it, because you know how kids are. She's in her teens, and within like five minutes, she told me his whole life story and <laughs> said he's living down in Florida, and Dad, for 99 cents, I can get his phone number. I said, okay, here's a credit card. Put it, get, got his phone number, called him up. Of course, he didn't answer. I left a message. Within 30 seconds, he called me back. He says, did you say you found my class ring? And I said, yeah. And he said, I lost that 50 years ago in 1974 when I graduated. Yeah. My brother was a class of 74 in London. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, they, I mean, they might have even known each other because he played sports and everything. But he said, I gave it to my then girlfriend. 
She didn't know where she lost it, but this makes sense because she used to show horses. So she must have been at the North Stonington Fairgrounds showing a horse, fell off in the soft dirt. This ring looked like it was brand new when it came out of the ground. I mean, there wasn't a mark, it wasn't dented, it wasn't anything because it was in the soft dirt. Uh, we shipped it down to them. Um, you know, the club offered to pay and ship it down to him. We shipped it down to him, and he sent us a picture, and it fit right on his finger 50 years later. Unbelievable. Uh, he was wearing it. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if, if we can find owners of stuff, then absolutely. Uh, which brings me up to what we do, too, is, and it happens quite a bit, uh, and there's a lot of members. i got to give them credit. There's a lot of members that we have that are part of this group that go out and they just look for if you have lost your ring, you lost jewelry, you lost something sentimental, you reach out to them. We do it free of charge. I tell everybody, reach out to my club because I have, and again, we have members everywhere from Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. So even if you're on the other end of Connecticut and you lose jewelry, you think you, you know where it might be, but you're not sure, give us a call. We do it free of charge. We don't charge anybody. Um, actually, the last time somebody lost a ring, I think they lost it in Niantic, and uh, five, five of us from my club were there within an hour looking for it and found it and gave it back to the owners. That's terrific. You know? Good yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and that's really, uh, that's what makes, uh, again, these clubs the way they are. Nobody's in it to make money. Nobody's in it if we can give stuff back to people. I mean, that's huge. Like I said, if you've seen that gentleman's face when I found that ring in his yard, because the first thing he said, where'd you find it? I said, over there. And he goes, you got to be kidding me. And he was all happy. You know, his brother hadn't worn a ring since he lost it. He had a, like a rubber, I don't know, some kind of rubber thing on it just in place of it for the time being. So we were able to get it to him. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty good, pretty good when you can do stuff like that, you know. Now, do you find, I mean, have people reached out to you and, and invited you on their property? Yeah, so it's I not have just had. always you knocking on the door. <laughs> yes. And that's, so word of mouth, really, and, and I always tell everybody whenever, and most of my friends know, uh, if they bump into somebody or if they have a friend or if they have a relative or they know somebody who knows somebody that has an old property. Uh, and I have had people reach out and say, hey, listen, I have this farm, you know, 1820s, uh, you know, any way you can come up. Uh, and absolutely, you know, I'm there as fast as I can. But depending upon the size of the farm, that's when we'll have like a group hunt. I'll invite the members. I'll say, listen, next Sunday we're all going to meet, 9 o'clock. We're going to go out. We're going to find whatever we can, show the owner, uh, you know, whatever he or she wants. They keep, and you get to keep the rest. Usually what we do is we all come out that day. We all chip in $5. I give the money to my wife, <laughs> Monica. She goes out and buys pizza and soda, brings them back. So we metal detect the whole morning, and then we take a break uh, for lunch. We eat. Um, usually what I do is I usually bring a, a silver half dollar, and whoever has the best find of the day, we give them the half dollar. So it's just like a contest, just something to, to get everybody really into it. And then after lunch, usually... 75% of them leave, the other 25% go back out into the farm. But yeah, people do reach out to me and, you know, I wish more did, to be honest with you. But, you know, it's people's property and I respect it. And it's that time of the year too, people enjoy their lawns, you know, whatever have you. Yeah, they want um, looking like a bunch of divots. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and, you know, like I said, we do it enough and, and uh, I remember uh, there was one person that was asking permission and the other person was like, yeah, I don't think so, I don't think so. And I said, well, listen, you know your neighbor next door? Yeah, well, you know I did his lawn two weeks ago. And he's like, you did? Because he, he didn't see any holes. He didn't see anything. And I was like, no. I said, I'll go, go over there now and see if you can tell where I've dug. He changed his mind. He was like, yeah, then by all means, you know. Because that's not our intention is to destroy people's lawns. But, in, but, but as a safeguard, I mean, are you insured? So that in case you've got a, a homeowner who is less than satisfied with the replacement or, yeah. the, or the patchwork, whether it's legitimate or not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You've been in, you know, uh, you're, when you're in law enforcement, oh, yeah. people yeah, yeah. have got the story for everything. Yes, yes, that's true. So, yeah, so I do have insurance uh, through the club. Uh, that's another thing that the dues pays for. 
Um, I do have insurance through the club. Um, and sometimes people, I would say probably less than 25% of the time, people ask if I have insurance. Uh, but like I said, 75% of the time, people are just like, listen, I've been dying for somebody to stop and ask me, yes, I, you know, show me what's in my yard. And then when I show them, they're like, you found this in my yard? You know, I found a, I found a New York uh, Park Commissioner's badge. Commissioner, so that's the, your, your top echelon. Uh, gold badge in somebody's yard in London. And they were like, you found this in my yard? And I said, yeah. And they're like, you sure? I said, yeah, I just found it all. And, you know, of course, they're, they're asking a question. They, they know I don't know. But they're like, well, how did it get there? I said, I, your guess is as good as mine. You know, and I called up the New York, uh, New York Park Commission, spoke to the commissioner at the time. That's when I was acting chief. So she, we talked, and I, I sent her a picture of the badge, and she's like, oh, my goodness. She goes, that's old. She goes, where did you find it? I said, I found it in London, Connecticut. She goes, where's that? <laughs> and I said, it's in southeastern Connecticut. And I said, I just wanted to make sure somebody didn't lose it or, God forbid, you know, there was a murder back in the 40s and, you know, whatever have you. You know, why is this New York police? And she's like, no. And uh, she said, you know, if you want to send it back. And I said, well, I was kind of hoping I could keep it. She goes, oh, by all means, keep it. So I have a New York Police Commission badge. You know, so like I said, you, you just never know. And uh, this person never would have known, just like the guy never would have known his brother's wedding band was in his yard, you know. What's the uh, average may not be the best term, but uh, depth that you will dig to uh yeah to find stuff so most of these machines are pretty advanced um that's why we're still finding stuff that we are because the machines of the 70s and 80s uh weren't as tough so these machines will go up to probably a good foot and a half depending upon however most of the stuff we dig is probably you know, I hate to, but I would say probably between two inches and maybe six to seven inches, if that. Uh, sometimes we do dig deeper. We have what's called a pinpointer, and it's it's about nine inches. And I've dug holes where the whole pinpointers fit right in, just to show, you know, how deep I've dug. Um, so it all depends. And I, I tell everybody, the deeper the coin is, obviously the harder it is to find. And depending upon its composition, depending upon how it's laying in the ground, if it's laying sideways you're almost not going to find it. So you need a coin that's flat. You know, you get something like this, like a big silver it half be, dollar. It can't be, but it can't be on, on edge. Yeah, no, on edge is very difficult. I mean, it can be. You could find it, but that's going to be really tough when they're on edge. So you're looking. So if it's deep and it's silver and it's down low and big, yes, then you're going you're gonna to go. So, yeah, I mean, it. you know, but it is it is odd. I found, I've dug, and I'm not kidding, eight to nine inches and found a penny from 2020. And I'm like, how the heck did this penny get here? Yet, again, I talk about that 1787 coin that I found at my parents. I don't think that was a, an inch and a half deep. I mean, I, I literally thought it was a modern quarter when I first found it. So Do you, know, do you, you find wonder. a fair amount of more current currency? Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so what I do is I keep all the current currency, uh, I throw it into I separate the pennies from all the other stuff. And uh, then at the end of the year, I go over to the coin star, throw it in the coin star, and, um, you know, and uh, I get an Amazon gift card because, and a, a lot of people don't know this, um, if you go on coin star and you just get the cash back, they charge you a percentage, 10 or 11%. But if you get a gift card, they don't charge you anything. So I get every year, I get an Amazon gift card. I take all my coins, throw them in. And I, I, I probably get about $150 a year uh, back just in pennies, dimes, quarters, nickels. Um, but that's, you know, that might be a little less because every now and then I might get done metal detecting and decide I want a coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. And I take three of the dirty coins out of my pocket and pay for a coffee with a coin. So, you know. Uh, yeah, but you're not uh, collecting the more modern no, stuff. No, you, because they're really not. And the reason why I collect the older ones is, um, A, because of their history, because they're not made anymore. And B, because of their silver, their silver content, 
uh, you know, these coins are 90% silver, whereas the coins of nowadays don't almost have no silver in it. Uh, it's a copper and metal alloy. Um, the uh, modern pennies now are zinc. Um, and you take a modern penny and you bury it out in the dirt and go back in a year and it's going to look like Pac-Man because half of it's going to be eaten away. Whereas you can take an old wheat penny from the 1900s and get it out and it looks just as good as when it was made because it's copper. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the, modern, the modern coins, I just, like I said, I get an Amazon gift card and then I buy more metal detecting stuff because I really need more, you know, I, I don't know. Right now, I think I have a metal detector for each day of the week. Don't ask me why, but I just have, I, I think I have six or seven of them. But now, I can only do, use one do, at a does, time. Does your wife actively participate in this, or is she operating more on the periphery? Well, so she's a huge help with the club, huge help. Uh, I'm the president, and she's the vice president, secretary, treasurer. Oh, okay. Um, so she's got a lot of roles. Yeah, so, but um, she does go out with me. Um, but she hasn't gotten over that hump of kind of like when you go fishing with somebody who's new and within five, ten minutes, if they don't have a fish, they're like, I'm done with this. Uh, <laughs> that's how she is. Uh, ten, fifteen minutes, and she's like, okay, I'm done. Uh, you know, I, I'm not finding anything. This is, I found bottle cap snails, and I'm like, you know, it's what's going to happen. Trust me, it's not. But she sometimes will go out alongside and, you know, because she likes that, seeing what it is, too. You know, what is it that I'm digging down for sure. to bring it up? But, yeah, she does go out. Um, my youngest uh, used to go out with me all the time. Um, my other two kids have done it once or twice. But, you know, when they're in their 20s and in their teens, that's they don't want to be metal detecting. Yeah. They want to be out doing what 20-year-olds and teens do. So... Uh, yeah, so she will go with me, um, and, and you know one thing too is um, she had to have hip surgery, so that's really helped her with her PT and her walk-in. People don't realize that how many steps you do when you're metal detecting. You're walking all the time, and uh, you know. So I mean, when I go down to the beach, sometimes if I go down to Ocean Beach, I'll walk back and forth like five, six times. You know, when you think about it, that's almost two miles. It's two miles I wouldn't have walked if I wasn't metal detecting. So it's very good exercise, too. So that really helped her out uh, quite a bit. But like I said, she, um, yeah, she's, I, I got to give her credit. She's the brains behind. She's the one that talked me into getting the banners, getting the T-shirts. We have the T-shirts that have the same logo on them. Um, you know, and like I said, we, we designed that logo. It's the spirit of 76. Uh, well, with them holding, it was a treat to have the, the banner up. I mean, it, 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 this yes, is, this is city focused, but tonight it's, <laughs> it's uh, New Southern England. New England Relic Hunters. Uh, yes, give, uh, give you the uh, the promo. Yes, yes, well. just try to get a little plug in, but yeah. So, and we gave the Spirit of Seventy Six metal detectors and shovels. Um, you know, just to show again the history. Really, that's really what we're into is the history of everything. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, George, it appears our time has uh, exhausted here. But Excellent. As always. Yes, a, thank a you very much. Fun. I greatly I, appreciate it, Marty. I enjoy having you on, and uh, perhaps we can get you down to the Kiwanis Club and give, give the abridged version for about 15, 20 minutes. Absolutely. I would love doing it. And uh, you can tell, tell the group what you're doing, and uh, yeah. would enjoy that. Sure. That would be great. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Folks, you've been watching City Focus tonight. I've been joined by George Potts, and we'll... Be back again next week. Good night.